I become very sensitive, aware of the need for promoting, you know, blackness. So the shop that I had was called the Corner of Jazz. Music is called the Great Healer. It's universal and brings cultures together, interpreting the mood of a movement. Ken Clay learned very early in his career as the first African-American culture shop in Louisville that this held true during the Civil Rights Movement in the late 1960s. Clay talks about when the riot broke out at 28th and Greenwood, leaving businesses damaged. What sticks out in his mind when the disturbance ended for that day? That night, I had on my business a speaker, outdoor speaker, you know, and one of my employees went and turned on Aretha Franklin's respect. What you want? And people started at night coming to my building, toward my building, dancing and singing respect, you know. And uh, that was a, a very moving moment for me, you know. Clay talks about growing up in Louisville and the fond memories he shares. First 18 years of my life I spent in college court housing projects. So it was just a wonderful, wonderful era and a wonderful, wonderful feel growing up in the projects. I was right across the street from what was then called Municipal College, which was the black a college in Louisville, you know? Today, we would know the school as the University of Louisville. As for the property, today, that's Simmons College of Kentucky. His life experiences and personal love for the arts landed him a career spanning over 20 years at the Kentucky Center for the Arts, helping give a new spin to the Midnight Ramble and creating events and programs like Arts Reach. Well, let me first say that when I went to Kentucky Center, I was put into the programming department. There were two of us there, I felt a need to get black people to come to the events at the Kentucky Center for the Arts. In this photo, you see the Negro Ensemble with young rising stars Samuel L. Jackson and Angela Bassett. Before black artists could perform at the Kentucky Center, Louisville had a venue that welcomed those artists. It started at the Lyric and another theater in Louisville, but it was a part of what was then called the Chitlin Circuit, where the best of black artists would come through and perform shows. Some of his favorite moments? My Angelo, one that I really wanted to meet and, and greet, and uh, was able to do that, interact with her, have pictures with her. I like the older artists, you know, the Cab Calloways. Heidi, 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 you know, I used to throw parties at the out of my house for some of the groups that I would bring in. And I know I brought Cab Calloway in, and after the show, he was over to my house. He and his wife and his daughter were there, you know, and uh, he just had a great, a great time. Clay is a history lesson with many of his awards, co-author of Two Centuries of Black Louisville, to the many events he still produces today, which includes programming for World Fest. He's leaving a legacy one artist at a time. I think my main legacy will be that I'm promoting black artists, doing things to help art, not only black artists, but minority artists, or small artists, local artists, to really achieve all that they can. For WHS 11 News, I'm Shirlene Shanklin, on your side.